the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey, and today's guest is my friend, Dr. Joe Utash. And Dr. Utash is located in Tucson, Arizona, and owns a family wellness practice called Wellness Key Chiropractic. And at Wellness Key, they are dedicated to teaching patients how to achieve true health and healing uh, by maintaining a healthy nervous system. And he's an amazing doctor, excited to have him on the show. So thank you so much, Dr. Joe, for, for joining me. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thanks for uh, uh, for inviting me to the show, uh, Dr. Casey, and, and look forward to see if I can add some value to your listeners. Awesome. Yeah. So why don't you get started just talking a little bit about your background. That way people get to know you a little bit more, um, how you got into the field you're in, and just how you got into teaching people about health and wellness. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, it started really, uh, I guess, 10, 12 years ago. Um, I, I was an, an athlete, uh, even further back than that, an athlete back in high school and college. Uh, thought I was healthy. You know, I thought that six pack abs meant health. And, uh, you know, long story short, uh, a couple of years after college, I uh, was in such bad shape that uh, physically that, that I could hardly get off the floor. I ended up uh, having a herniated disc in my lower back. Um, and just like most uh, most Americans and the way that I was taught is, you know, when you're sick, you go to the doctor. Um, I end up getting, you know, multiple uh, rounds of painkillers and then steroid shots and then even a recommendation to get it checked out for surgery. And uh, all, all the while, I'm in my young 20s and I'm thinking, man, this this can't be right. Like, I've worked out my whole life, you know, and, and what is going on here? And uh, I just happened upon a chiropractor at a home and garden show. And uh <laughs> Dr. Alan Miner, uh, this is in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and and uh, my family is a roofing construction company, so I'm I'm there with my family, you know, representing our product, and you know he happens to be there having a little booth set up, and I really didn't understand what chiropractic was or who he was or what it was, but I I didn't want surgery and I was sick of suffering, and I just remember kind of taking a break and kind of probably hobbling over to his booth and saying, you know, what the heck, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, that what the heck uh, turned into an evaluation, uh, X-rays, and and. Uh, and then really um, him taking the time uh, where no other doctor had going over my health history and really what's going on with my spine and my disc and why the pain is happening. And, and then ultimately, you know, giving me a solution. And, and so, uh, you know, he, he's like, you know, this is going to take you know X amount of time. Uh, there's going to be some work on your end. But, uh, you know, I really believe that we can help you. And, and uh, you know, being 23 at the time, uh, I was young, dumb and and, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want to dedicate that type, type of time and, and resources uh, to getting the care that I probably needed. So uh, the next year I uh, was engaged. Uh, big surprise, just like any health issue, it didn't go away, uh, ended up getting worse. And uh, at that time, about a year later, my, uh, my now wife of, of 10 years kind of kicked my butt uh, to go back. And, and uh, uh, that's kind of where it all started. So I started that healing process there. Um, he's just a phenomenal teacher and, and, uh, really taught me, you know, I got physically well, but then I got mentally inspired and, uh, we, you know, we, we left a, a brand new house in a gated community, a new truck, everything, you know, a great income. And, uh, you know, my wife thought she was marrying into, you know, uh, some good income and, <laughs> and we left it all for a one bedroom apartment in Dallas, Texas. And so I was inspired to, to really help as many people as possible, uh, with the same information and, and, uh, and technique, uh, uh, of helping people through chiropractic, uh, um, after myself getting well. And so I uh, graduated top of the class and, and, uh, it was involved in, in, in a lot of, uh, extracurricular activities from health screenings and, and talks and, and working with some of the best, uh, uh leaders in, in our profession. Um, around the country, and in, even at, at the end, uh, after graduating, had a, an opportunity to work with uh, Dr. Chris Zaino, and he's mm -hmm. uh, a large guy in the profession. Um, my wife and I got to kind of study under him and his wife uh, for a period of time there, and, and uh, it was just amazing seeing the, the diversity of people and issues and conditions coming into the office and getting prescribed a set amount of chiropractic care. Uh, and then watching their their bodies just heal and like be transformed and and you know this is a this is was a, a, an all cash office at, at Dr. Cristanos and so you know and and it was not you know what what people would say is cheap right and so uh, these people are forking out dough. And it just like really just set my mindset right because you know not only did I pay you know this is 10 12 years ago over three thousand dollars to get uh, care in, in an office out of my own pocket um, you know I saw these people doing it and so it was amazing to see all these people just you know just it was just a different mindset seeing them getting well and uh, and 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 you know I can share stories of people who you know with HIV positive and having you know after six months of care the viral load went undetectable. 
I know that I, I get it. Those things are hard to believe. Mm-hmm. I, I had my hands on these people. I've witnessed it with my own eyes. And so you know, the power that's inside the body is just amazing. And and that's that's really what led to uh, my wife and I starting our our uh, wellness key chiropractic. And and where yeah, our goal is family health care. It's it's not just disease management or prevention. I I also have a unique uh, life experience of having my little brother as a medical doctor, uh, and his wife is a uh, a pharmacist. And so you know we we just re- together recently, and just how we raise our children, what we think of health, and what we think of prevention, uh, what we think of nutrition. Like it's just it's totally different, uh, you know. And, and these are extremely intelligent, you know, uh, you know, high earning people. Uh, and, and they just have no idea when it comes to nutrition. No, I mean, it's not even taught. I mean, I'm sure your brother know, like it's not even taught in middle medical school or, I mean, maybe an elective at some schools, but it's not required, which is ridiculous. Just, it's crazy. It, it, it really, it really has like, yeah, it's just, it's not, it, you know, it's a misnomer to call it healthcare. It's, it's, it's sick care. It's yep. crisis care. It's disease like management. And, and, you know, he'll, he'll admit it. He went from family practice into urgent care because he was sick of just chronically doling out drugs. Now at least he gets to do stitches and, mm-hmm. you know, a person like blows her hand up with which a firecracker. Is, that yeah, type of which thing, is, right? which is what it should be. I mean, health, I mean, that's emergency care and, and we have the best in the world of emergency care. And that should be like the golden standard of if you, you know, if you break your arm or like, if you, you know, 4th of July, you, your finger flies off, please go to urgent care. Um, cause we have the best, but that should be like the main time that you are going to a hospital, not for, you know, if you have a stuffy nose or something that's super minor. And, and that's, that's really the, the big picture that we're really trying to instill in our patients is that one, you're awesome. Right. And so <laughs> your body is awesome. It's created awesome. It's by design, right. It's designed to heal. We just need to see what what are we doing uh and especially habitually i mean a donut doesn't kill you an apple doesn't make you healthy right so what are you <laughs> doing habitually that that's that's adding to disease and 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 issues in your body versus you know what are you doing that's that's allowing your body to heal and function and repair itself normally right exactly uh, and so uh it, it's it's you know doctor means teacher and i think that that's a huge part of of what we do. And I, I love what you're doing here with this, uh, with this podcast. Uh, it's just getting out and, and really helping as many people that want to help that get help, uh, as possible. So anyhow, just, just experiences with my brother teach me, you know, that, that anyone that's, that's not, uh, or that's like just really just trusting their health to the, the current medical system, they're, they're not getting the full picture. Right. And, and so, uh, they're missing like this huge opportunity to to have optimal health r- rather than just waiting until the next crisis happens. And uh, and so that's 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 a huge part of what we do. We, we have in our office uh, monthly workshops uh, that, you know, from toxicity to nutrition to raising healthy families to how your immune system works uh, to staying healthy for the holidays. Uh, all of these things to give give regular people like myself strategies you know i, I learn from every workshop as well i've, tried, I've probably done a nutrition workshop uh, over a hundred times and you know it, it's just it's a good reminder it's like going to church it's a good reminder that you know how, how can i get closer to what i know to be true right yep and that's the same reason with your patients like they can come to basically the same class you know, multiple times and always leave with one new thing that they can take away and apply and get better Absolutely. You know, we're not perfect, right? I mean, uh, we're always, it, it's always these choices that we're making. And then we have different situations in life and, and, and things present themselves where, you know, hey, you know, maybe I made a bad choice here or a series of bad choices. Hey, it's time to, you know, get back uh, and, and, and kind of get back to the, you know, the basics, right? You know, I would say blocking and tackling, just kind of get back to the, the good stuff. And, and uh, you know, if we realize that we're not, not, and that's why I feel that progress evaluations in our office are so important because it's a great time to see, hey, you know what? Life happens. You know, mm-hmm. many of our patients have been here for years now. And, and you know, are we on track? Are we off track? Have we done a little slipping? Are we moving forward? And, it, you know, touching base, uh, we, we do it every every 12 to 15 visits just to see, hey, you know, are you, it's, it's care versus treatment. And and that's kind of a, a huge point that I've been seeing here a lot lately in, in even our profession is, you know, come in for a treatment. It's, you know, this amount or whatever versus like, let me take care of you. Let me help. Let me show you, take care of you, uh, recommend uh, the best things for you to get the best out of your body. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're teaching them how to essentially be their own doctors, because like you were saying before, you know, we have everything that we need inside, you know, health comes with from within. So if you give them the tools, then, I mean, every, it's not, you know, it's not just coming into your office, you know, once that day creates health. 
I mean, it does. It, it obviously it's helping their bodies heal and function at a high, function at a higher level. But it's what they're doing when they're not with you, which you're teaching them, and, and that makes all the difference. Totally, totally. So, uh, I guess you know we're 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 in summertime right now. Um, shoot, it in in uh, Tucson, Arizona, here right now. Yesterday, we're we're approaching record temperatures. I think it was like 114 yesterday. <laughs> It's going to be that's what, uh, Lindsay, today. Lindsay was telling me how hot it was, and that's insane. <laughs> I feel yeah, for you guys. So, so you know, I'm I'm from Michigan. Believe it or not, I actually like it. So I know it, it, I'm, I'm the crazy one. Uh, but uh, you know, it's better than I always say. It's better than shoveling snow. So true. That's very uh, we're, true. <laughs> we're blessed to have we're blessed to have uh, you know positions that we work inside most of the time. But ultimately, how can you stay healthy during the summertime? Here in Arizona, it seems like, especially in Tucson, I know in Florida is kind of a uh, similar thing, mm -hmm. where people, they, they take off a lot during the summers. Kids are out of school. They're going on summer trips, vacations. You know, schedules might be a little off. You know, what can we do to, to maintain our health uh, during the summertime? So what are some kind of some tips, some tricks uh, over the course of the summer? So uh, one, obviously here in, in Arizona and probably just about anywhere else, uh, it's hotter in the summer. Uh, and so we need more water, right? And so uh, if you're sweating, you're losing water. So again, let's just get back to the basics. So how much water are you actually drinking? And I don't mean, you know, juice is good, you know, the right juices, but I'm not talking juice. I'm not talking coffee. I'm not talking tea, but just plain old water. Are you getting enough? And I think that's a, that's a great place to start. Absolutely. And it's just great to like just monitor that throughout the day because it's something that you might think to yourself, oh, I'm getting plenty of water. But once you start to actually measure it, I think a lot of people would be surprised how little they're actually getting. So just keeping track of it, whether if you're keeping a little tab on your iPhone notes or if, you know, different people have different ways of marking their water bottles or things like that. It's just, it's important to keep track of for sure, especially if you're living in the desert like you guys. I, I, I yeah, I totally agree. I, I know uh, Dr. Zeno was probably the first person I really saw do this and, and uh, he's adjusting, you know, all day long. And uh, the guy has a gallon jug with him, like everywhere he goes. Uh, so he knows that he's getting enough water. I think it's just, it, you know, it's, he's one of my mentors and, and I, I see him doing a lot of right things and I try to copy that. Right. So uh, for me, you know, I, I think the standard industry standard they'd say is like half your body weight in ounces of water. Um, I, I would disagree in the, in the fact that I would say that's like a minimum. Yeah. Um, and, and so our patients initially, uh, I usually recommend their entire body weight in ounces of water. Um, and, and, and during the summer right now, if you're sweating, you're losing more. So you just need to uh, stay hydrated. You should never feel thirsty. If you feel thirsty, you've already waited too long. Right. Yeah. No, it's important just to listen to your body. I mean, it's just like your, you know, the check engine light, if you have a headache or if you're feeling thirsty, it's probably already, you know, you're probably already dehydrated. So definitely keep track of that. Awesome. Awesome. I think another important one, you know, we, uh, we're blessed to have a, a pool and we're going outside with the kids and, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy right now. They're advertising like crazy with, uh, the sunscreens. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, I think that's an important topic that, you know, especially, uh, young parents, uh, like myself, you know, what are you putting on side? And, you know, we can talk about what you're putting inside your body, but, uh, ultimately the stuff that you put on side your body becomes inside your body, right? Uh, on, on top of your body, you, you know, your skin is, 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 you know, absorbs what you put on it. And so when we talk about sunscreens, you know, I, there was a time where I was like, you know, super militant about, you know, everything. And I, I realized to, to maybe I'll relax a little bit, but, you know, I can't have my daughter who's three and a half years old, you know, for the most part, quite frankly, we don't put on uh, sunscreen on her unless we know we're going to be out for a long period of time. That's one. Uh, n number two, if we if we did lightly, like we're just going to you know go out and play in the pool for like an hour or two, then we might use um, uh, something like coconut oil, uh, which actually has some some degree of of, of uh, sunscreen in there and protection and, and moisturization for the skin. Uh, and then uh, you know if we're going to spend a day at the beach. Uh, then there, then, then we haul out the, uh, the Dr. Mercola stuff, right? So it's like mm -hmm. green tea oil, the zinc oxide is like, you know, the white, white stuff that, you know, from the 1950s that makes your stomach <laughs> white. Yeah. Like the old school so, lifeguard nose. Right. Yeah. Totally. Totally. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, you know, I don't know if she particularly loves it, but we, we, we lather it on here that way. We just don't have to worry about it. Right. Cause you know about it. The sun is fantastic. Uh, too much exposure. You, you can damage the skin, cause more damage uh, later on. And, and uh, but overall, I mean, I think the patients that we see, we they're chronically low in vitamin D. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, we live in Tucson. So people think like, how would you ever have low vitamin D in Tucson? Right. But we're, we're not getting the sun exposure that we should. And when we do, we slather it with toxic chemicals. Right. Uh, that, that blocks some of the, the good stuff. So exactly. No, I, I love that you mentioned um, the different levels of sun exposure, because I mean, just like you said, you know, if you're just going out for, you know, 30 minutes, it's usually it's probably not even necessary. Or if you 
you know, if you are uncomfortable not using anything, I love that you did m- mention coconut oil because I think people would think, you know, the whole like old school, like you put baby oil on and you get like fried, Ugh. but it's, but it's not the same. It's completely different because there is a level of SPF and, um, it's just, it just affects your body differently. And, um, and then as far as like the Mercola brand, I, I do that. I love that brand as well. Um, and there's other brands as well, but I think something to also keep in mind with the natural brands, um, is that most of them aren't waterproof, right? Because of the, the right. chemicals that you would have to use to make that waterproof. So right. if so, you so use you a natural, apply it. apply it more. And I think, yeah. the, do you remember like there was a big controversy with like the honest companies, sunscreen, this kid yes. got super burned. But the thing is, you can't use it like a conventional sunscreen. You have to apply it more because it, it doesn't have the chemicals that make it water resistant. Um, so that's just something, you know, that's really important to be aware of. Totally agree. I totally agree. But again, uh, exposure, sun exposure is is just essential. Exactly. Uh, and even here in Tucson, when it's 114, you know, you, you got to pick and choose your times. But uh, I think it's just, you know, it, it, this is what what creates healthy kids. I mean, think about the, this generation versus my generation versus, you know, my parents' generation, right? So, uh, you know, they, they, I was outside playing. I'm from Michigan. But uh, but even I talked to the the locals here that were kids uh, back 30 years ago, and they were, they just spent way more time outside. Yeah, even in the summer or, you know, they took uh, the heat of the day where they're, they're resting, but they got up real early. They, they're or they stayed up a little bit later and they're, they're outside playing. Yep. Uh, and, and so it just, that's, that's not happening. And I, I think that's a, that's a huge thing uh, that we need to get back to is just getting out and moving. Um, and again, you know, if, if you're a parent with kids, uh, you know, I, I, I struggle with this myself. I, I get it. Parenting is not easy, but you know, the, the iPhone, the iPad usage all the time. Right. And so there's just been a lot of, a lot of research on this here uh, lately. And, and if you look at a lot of these, these, uh, these top CEOs that the really the movers and shakers up at the top, mm-hmm. uh, they're, they're really, they're limiting their, their kids exposure either completely or, or, uh, significantly, uh, from using these things. And, and it's, again, it's the, the, the quick dopamine hit it's, it's, we're almost training our kids to, to get that, uh, that instant satisfaction versus, you know, learning and, and using their imagination and Hey, like inventing a game and playing a game and, and that type of thing. Uh, so I, I think that's, you know, it, 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 we have to, you know, almost encourage that behavior uh, and teach people, you know, how to use your imagination. And like, you know, uh, and, and I think that's 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 a, a thing that I'm still struggling to to, to work with myself and, and our family. Uh, but something that I am I'm, I'm very aware of. And now it's just, you know, how are we making steps to, to limit that time and and, uh, and move towards, you know, using the brain? Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah, I think it was even um, there was I'm sure you've read the same article with it was with Steve Jobs, whenever, you know, he was alive, uh-huh. it was talking about how he wouldn't even let his kids use an iPhone or use an iPad because he wanted them to be able to think more critically and use their imaginations and be outside and have all of that brain stimulation. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. So, uh, and then uh, obviously exercise, right? I mean, so, uh, you know, we, we are designed to move and, and, uh, we we all know the old phrase. I mean, whether whether you're in the chiropractic world or not, if you don't move it, you lose it, right? Okay. Uh, and and so it's just it's just really picking your time to move and and uh, ideally consistently and and you know ideally that'd be some sort of uh, exercise. But you know sometimes the exercise for some people is you know maybe walking around the inside of a mall. Uh, it's not the best, but you know it, it's like we always say around here, good, better, best. I used to be like, okay, you know, we're gonna do an interval training, blah blah blah, six days a week, let's do it. Uh, and and that's good for some, but that, 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 I think that scares the bejesus out of a lot of people, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, what what can we do and and consistently do that's that's again, we are our habits, right? So if you look in your mirror and you're not happy, it's because of the habits you've chosen, right? So. Uh, creating those good, healthy habits that, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're going to wake up at five and you're going to go walk outside for two miles, right? So that's better than nothing. I'd say, boom, start there, start somewhere uh, where you're, you know, you're, you're moving it in a positive direction. Uh, and I, I think that's, that's huge. It's just staying on, you know, with the schedules being varied, like definitely adding to your health savings account, right? Uh, so adding uh, by by doing some exercise and you'll, you'll realize that you'll make better choices. Uh, your energy is going to be higher. Uh, you start thinking more clearly. I mean, the benefits are, everyone knows it, right? And so it's just a matter of like, it doesn't necessarily mean that I like to get up on Tuesday and go to the gym at seven o'clock, but I do it anyhow, even when I don't feel great, because it's just, it's part of what I do. It's it's who I am. And on Tuesdays, I, I work out at seven, right? It's just, it's just how it works. 
yeah, no, I mean, it definitely is all about making those habits and it's just knowing the health benefits of it and just doing it anyways. And I mean, typically like, I mean, we've all seen like those internet memes. It's like you never regret a workout. I mean, you always feel amazing afterwards and um, it's, you're just going to, it's just going to leave you with more um, energy and more clarity and focus. To- totally agree. And and so uh, obviously I can't, I can't, not talk about chiropractic. So I, I am a, I, 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 I cannot not talk about chiropractic. I, 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 when I'm on vacation, like I'm adjusting the taxi cab driver, right? So <laughs> it's, uh, it's, I, I am chiropractic. I am a chiropractor. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a huge missing link when it comes to healthcare. And, and I don't know how that, that, that many people have not, uh, started using this health strategy, but you know, if, if you're an athlete, you're always looking for something better. But if you're a, a mom, if you're, if, if, you know, I, I say this lovingly, if you're a computer nerd, right. You still probably want like, you know, better abilities to focus on, on what you're doing. Right. Right. And so, it, you know, I, I feel like people somehow have just like missed the boat when it comes to the utilization of chiropractic, not for pain, but for like, hey, this is going to enhance whatever God has gifted me in. Right. This is going to make me use that gift better. Right. right. And so uh, and, and that's that's really where where my emphasis and focus is on chiropractic. No doubt. You know, I came in for back pain. Right. Very cliche. I get it. Right. It, it took a crisis. I, I really urge people not to wait to the crisis, right? Because then it's then you're like digging out of a hole instead of starting out at ground level or just a little bit below ground level and then working your way up, right? That's that's where like the the good stuff is. I always say that's the icing on the cake, right? It's not it's not the pain, it's the above the pain model, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, for for us, you know, I I couldn't imagine. I personally get adjusted three times a week. Uh, some people on here are gonna think, oh my goodness, that is like crazy. Why would you get adjusted three times a week? If I had an associate doctor in here, I'd be getting adjusted every day. When I go to a chiropractic conference, I'll get adjusted six, eight, ten times uh, during the weekend. And if you understood chiropractic as I understand it, it's like, why would you not want your body performing at its absolute best as often as possible? Right. 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 Why yep. not? Right. And I mean, even more importantly, you know, for for our kids as well, so they can. I mean, like you were saying before, like you're not digging out of a hole; you're starting at you know, ground level. Ground and zero. yeah, right. I mean, and I know with like, you know, with my daughter and your daughter and I the baby that's on the way, like, it's just, it's a way of life. It, it, it really is. And, and if you look at Cairo kids and, 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 you know, I hate, I hate to, I even hate to make the comparisons, but the reality is, is there's a, there's a way, uh, and you know, you hate to say even the chiropractic lifestyle, I'd say just a healthy lifestyle, uh, that of course, in our modern, you know, forward head posture, computer sniffing, cell phone using lifestyle, <laughs> uh, you know, chiropractic is not like a, a, like a, you know, maybe I might need it sometime or someday. Uh, it's like essential. Right. And so, you know, when I make my recommendations and, and even for a person who's looking for, you know, long time wellness care, I couldn't imagine recommending someone less than once a week. Why? Because in, in those seven days, there is just a ton of, at least in my life, there's a ton of junk that goes on that causes me to become what's called subluxated. Uh, and I'm not functioning at my best. So, you know, it all depends on, you know, what, what are your values? And, and, you know, if, if it's, if it's money, great, then use chiropractic to help yourself make more money, right? If it's your health, awesome, duh, right? I mean, you, you want to make sure that brain is communicating with the rest of your body efficiently and effectively, right? Neurologically and then biomechanically, right? So if you don't move it, you lose it. Uh, we see that, right? As a, as a practicing chiropractor, I see, uh, I have a 94 year old patient and I have pregnant moms, right? And everything in between. And so you see some of the people come in 60 years without getting an adjustment, right? And you see the degeneration, the damage, you see what an accident 20 years ago that was not corrected, what that leads to, you know, in, in the future. And so you're like, oh my goodness, I can't imagine, you know, the, the suffering that you're gonna have to go through if we like, we just need to start on this now, right? And so let's just, let's just get this thing rolling because y- your quality of life, uh, whatever, it, it, whatever it is, the things that you love and enjoy, you're missing out, right? Yeah, if yeah, if, if you're not under care, it's, it, it's as simple as that. It's not, it's not scary. It's not, you know, people always ask, well, do I adjust with this or this technique or do I use an activator? Do I use my hands or the table or whatever? And, and I say, you know, it, it, it all depends on the person. Everyone is different. Everyone is different. And, and, but everyone, uh, you know, can benefit from, from chiropractic care. Uh, and how they benefit is 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 maybe a little bit differently. Some people, you know, you've heard the awesome stories from, uh, you know, blood pressure and people coming off antidepressants and and uh, to you know headaches. But I would say simple headaches. But you know, if you've ever had a severe headache, that's you know that's your 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 life is less 
right? When when you're, I mean, it's it, you're obviously focused internally when you have a headache, right? You're only focused on the headache. You're focused I mean, on to a to a mom getting rid of headaches is, uh, I mean, that's life changing. I mean, you can't. Right. <laughs> I mean, you it, it's it's hard enough, you know, whenever you're you know you're trying to manage a lot of things, but if you're dealing with migraines or just chronic headaches all of the time, I mean that. I mean, the, the amount of life that you lose because of that, I mean, you can't be yourself. I mean, and that's with anything, not just headaches. You know, you, if you're not your healthiest self, I mean, you can't, you know, be there for your kids or your grandkids or whatever you're trying to accomplish. Right. I, I, again, it, you know, as I know, I always say, and I say to our patients, your health, it, your health is your biggest asset, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, right? So it, it, money can't buy your health. Uh, and if you lose all your health and your money is useless anyhow. Uh, so it's just, you know, doing simple things that you can add to your, your, your health, your vitality, uh, your quality of life. I think that's just, it's, it's essential, right? And, and it's something that needs to be taught on bigger and bigger platforms. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's easy to make something for, you know, a 10th of a penny and sell it for $4, uh, and then advertise it, you know, for billions of dollars on, on, uh, on TV, um, you know, to, for people taking responsibility and action steps, that's, you know, it just, it takes a lot of voice. And so I appreciate again, what you're doing. Yeah, no, thank you. I do appreciate that. Before we, uh, before we, uh, jump off, if you just want to hit a little bit, um, go, going back to, um, a little bit of like the summer tips. Um, I know on your social media, you've been doing a lot with like how to keep people healthier on vacations. And I think that's an awesome topic because, you know, we have a lot of people traveling right now and there are a few steps that people can take to make their trips healthier. So they don't, fully mess up everything they've been working on or make it harder to come back from after summer. So if you just want to hit on some key points that you've been really teaching people with that. Awesome. So, so I think uh, just one starts with planning, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, if you know, you, your chances are, you know, you're going on vacation before the night, the night before you leave. Right. So uh, it's, it's just knowing what you do. And, and uh, you know, I always say to, to our patients, you know, when you're on vacation, do you brush your teeth? And uh, I think most people would say yes, right? I'd, I'd hope so, uh, you know. <laughs> right, because it, it's, it's, it's just a strategy that right. we use to, to keep our teeth healthy. And, and so we have them when we're, when we're 70, right? So uh, I, I would say that, you know, part of that, the, the, those strategies for staying healthy over uh, vacation time is is one, what, what are you, of course, uh, eating, right? So uh, sometimes it's not always the easiest to eat the best. Um, we did a little post, a little tip on, you know, what are some healthier restaurants that you could eat at? And, and again, I might have 15 people uh, disagree with you on this, but, you know, uh, you know, the, in our family, there's, there's a rule against we don't do McDonald's, right? So uh, unless we're like about to die, like that's like death food. Right. Uh, so <laughs> for whatever reason, we, like that, that's, that's avoidable at all costs. And, and nowadays, you know, when you fly, it's easier to do these things, right? So uh, Chipotle is, is quite frankly, one of our go-tos, right? Uh, you can get a salad just about anywhere these days. Uh, trying to find, uh, you know, there's there's different, you know, I guess, uh, non-name brand restaurants that are like Chipotle that you can get bowls of beans and and chicken. And many of them are, are even free range chicken these days. It's pretty awesome. Right. So you you can get this stuff at a variety of places. That That's an easy way to start. We're we're uh, just recently traveling to Michigan and uh, in the Chicago airport, there was actually a yoga studio for free to use to, for stretching. So wow, that's you know, awesome. You know, you're sitting on these seats for, you know, four hours and like in this, you know, totally hunched over position. And uh, uh, one, a tip on that is, as I always take the magazines personally, I take the magazines in front of me, roll them into a roll, and then I put them in my lumbar spine where that curve <laughs> should be. Uh, and that, that really, it really preserves my low back. So when I get up, I'm not as fatigued in the low back. Uh, still, sitting is sitting, right? So I don't recommend that. So we have the opportunity right at, at a layover in Chicago to uh, start doing some stretching and some, uh, some light exercise just to kind of get the blood moving. And so I always recommend at least at a bare minimum, take a walk in the airport, get the body moving, open up, right? Get your chest up, get your shoulders back, open up the hip flexors. Don't just go from sitting down on the airplane to sitting down at, uh, at the airport, right? So, uh, get some walking there. When you finally get to your destination, right? Uh, be prepared, look up the Whole Foods uh, or or the Sprouts or the, the grocery store uh, of your of your choice, Whole Foods is at least nationwide, mm-hmm. right? Uh, where you can go and, and you can shop and get some essentials or even better yet, 
bring some of them with you, right? So uh, your raw nuts, uh, easy one, right? So snacks on the airplane are horrible. If you bring some, you, you can you can prepare for that because you know that you're going to be hungry on a four-hour flight, right? right? Especially if you have kiddos. Bring the fruit, bring the nuts. It's it's all permissible, right? So you already have that there. Bring some healthy snacks for your entire trip. Plan on that, right? And so that way your your, your kids, that way you don't make bad choices when, when uh, the kids are hungry, that type of thing. Yeah, no, I uh, love that. Uh, exercise, right? So you know, so many in my family, I was blessed. My dad was an ex-army ranger, right? And so uh, discipline was was kind of part of our growing, our upbringing. And so like after every meal, we took a walk. Uh, and so the dishes, they're going to be there when you get back. Don't worry about it, right? Uh, like get up after you, after you, if you get done eating, go, go, don't go sit on the couch. Don't worry about even necessarily cleaning up right away. Go for a walk. It's simple. It's easy, right? Uh, just, just do it. Uh, and encourage the loved ones, the family that you're traveling with, uh, do that. So if it's hot outside, go to the, go to the mall and walk around. If it's, uh, if you're a morning person, do it in the morning. If it's an evening, do it in the evening when it cools down. Uh, but like get some exercise in there. You well, can, especially if you're on vacation, I mean, you could go walk on the beach and that's, I mean, that's obviously something that you're probably not used to doing every day. So that makes it more fun as well. Totally. So, so those are some of the, the easier things, uh, uh, that I would say to, to start with is just keep up with some sort of movement that'll help. Uh, if you're making, if you know, again, one donut doesn't kill you. So I'm, uh, I used to be a little bit more strict with myself and, and, uh, I think about my parents and, and my family, they feared me coming cause they're like, oh, I have to get all this special food. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, you know, we, 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 now we usually do some of the grocery shopping for us. So like when we were in Michigan this last, uh, last month, uh, we went to the grocery store and bought a bunch of fruits and vegetables and bought a bunch of, of healthy, uh, things to eat, uh, when we were there for all the extended family. So that way, like the kids always had something healthy to, to, to nibble on. So you're not just nibbling on crackers and, and, and all the stuff, you know, all the junk food that, that maybe, uh, I know I used to nibble on as when I was a kid. Right. And so that's kind of ingrained in us. And so you kind of have to like, if it's out there, like if fresh strawberries are out there, they're cut, they're washed, they're ready to go. Like people are going to eat them, you know? And, and so just, just do that. And you'll be surprised that, you know, you know, maybe Uncle Larry, who you don't think would ever eat a, uh, a fresh vegetable or fruit, if it's there, it's on the on the counter and it's ready. I, I, I think you'll be surprised at how fast it'll go. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I love all of that. That's amazing. So, um, Dr. Joe, what is the best way for people to follow you on social media and also your website? That way they can keep up with the tips that you are putting out weekly with how to stay healthier during the summer. And then obviously... You're going to have different tips throughout the year for people, um, just depending on what season it is. So what's the best way for people to follow what you're doing? Totally. Uh, I, would, I would definitely say Facebook. Um, our website is also updated. And, and uh, you know, part of what we teach here is, is uh, not a, it's corrective care chiropractic. So we, we have some exercise in there that I think that you know, it's basic spinal hygiene. Uh, that'd be an easy free resource that people could could do. It's kind of like brushing your teeth for your spine every single day. So even if you just went to the website, Wellness Key Cairo, Dot com. Uh, you went to patient resources, you saw the exercise videos. If you just started implementing that to your day, every single day, twice a day, it's like brushing your teeth. I think that you'll start uh, reaping some of those benefits down the road as well. That, that's an easy one. Uh, second one is, is, is Facebook. You're right. I, I'm always trying to add value to, to our patients and then to their friends and family. So uh, Facebook and then uh, uh, slash uh, wellness key chiro, wellness key chiropractic. Uh, and, you know, from videos to challenges, we, we've been having a lot of fun with challenges this year. So, uh, you know, a 30 day nutrition challenge, or we've done a sleep challenge where, you know, we gave people like, uh, 10 different things that are going to enhance the quality of their, of their sleep, pick four of them and do it, do it for a complete month. Right. And watch your sleep improve. Uh, and, and same thing with allergies. So do these three things or four things every day for a month and watch your, your allergy symptoms improve. Right. And so like we, we've had a lot of fun with the challenges this year. So always, you know, if you if you follow us on Facebook, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in Tucson or in Maine. Right. Uh, you can do these challenges with us. We'll try to keep keep you up to date with that. I think that'll be a, a, a way that you can actually, you know, improve the quality of your life. That's awesome. No, I love that. And and um, I, just one more uh, closing question that um, that I do with every guest. So if you had one piece of advice that you could just give to the audience, it just just one thing, what would it be? That's a good one. Uh, and, and I could go, you know, uh, uh, all doctor, chiropractic, proper answer and, you know, take your health uh, more seriously. And, and, I, and I think that's important. Uh, but I, w I think I'm going to go in the fashion of uh, Billy D and say, you know, maybe uh, have fun uh, and try to do more of the right things and don't take yourself so dang seriously. 
I love it. And I love Billy D. So <laughs> I love that you uh, brought him into it. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Utesh, for coming on. I loved having you. Um, please, everybody, go follow him on social media. Check out the website. Check out the exercises. And feel free to reach out to him if you have any questions. I know he'd um, respond quickly with any questions that you guys have. So thank you Absolutely. so much for coming on. I really loved having you. Well, thanks for having me, Dr. Casey.